Good morning. Well, thank you, Marianne. That's nice. It's good to be back. It's good to be back, except when my alarm went off. But you'll understand, right? Uh, it did feel good to get back up this morning and get back in here. I have to make sure all my stuff is in the right spot. That's what I'm struggling with this morning. Morning, Debbie. Good morning, Belinda. Mary Beth. So, so yeah. So while folks log on, um, let's see. Vacation time off. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, I played uh, played my best round of golf that I've played in a while, so that was a win. Um, and got a pretty decent sunburn from kayaking yesterday. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, also just nice to get get some things done. Um, so Jenny and I have very different, very different ways of understanding time off. Um, Jenny's the one who likes to go places. Um, and I like going places. I like hanging out, I like doing stuff. Oh, wow. There's everybody. Good morning. Um, Jenny likes going places, doing stuff. And I'm such a homebody. I mean, I guess that, I guess that comes from growing up on a farm. I went on one vacation where all five of us in my immediate family went away as a kid. So I'm, I'm totally content to stay home. For me, um, vacation is about uh, just, as I describe it, expanding my bandwidth. And so if I can get some stuff out of the way that is kind of clogging up space in my mind um, so I can come back into the office feeling like I have less things to worry about, that's a win for me. So um, so that's, so that's I got some of that done. I'm still working on the house. Got some other things taken care of. It's just nice to have some things behind me, not to have to worry about them. And I can just kind of come in here and just focus on what needs to be done today. So, um, so yeah, so in that respect, it was good. Um, and, uh, and as we're getting started, um, I just want to say just a huge thank you, not only to Steve and Dot and Belinda, um, and I, I don't think there was anybody else. I was following along sort of here and there. I hope you all understand. Um, so if I miss somebody, I'm really sorry. But to you all, thank you so much. Um, I tell you what, it, honest to goodness, there is nothing that does a pastor's heart better than knowing that the things that create meaning for others, they don't have to do alone. Um, and so to know that this space continued to be maintained and curated in some way, shape, or form, and that you all are willing to take a risk with going on camera, trust me when I tell you, I know it's harder than it looks. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. Um, and so um, from every, oh, and Vicki, that's right, Vi Vicki did something too, I apologize. And so so to all of you, um, just a, a clap um, for sure. And I invite all of you to join in and just clapping, clapping for all of them. Um, and so, but it is good to be back in the circle. And so we are, we're going to turn our thoughts to prayer. And so we are on June 8th. Um, and I'm uh, um, just sorry. And uh, so, and yeah, so this is an open invitation. I see Belinda's comment about Bob would probably like to play golf. Excellent. So I need to know who the golf players are. Um, I'm finally hitting my irons well enough that I feel good to sort of let that out on the congregation. So you all figure out who likes playing golf and uh, I am, I am down for a good round. So anyway. So turn our thoughts to prayer this morning. It is June the 8th um, in the book of Common Prayer. We are uh, on page 312. And as always, you can follow along at commonprayer.net. And so friends, as we gather this morning, just going to invite you, as, we've, as we often do, just to clear your mind, clear whatever's going on. Like I said, I'm, I've, my mind is feeling a little clearer, but at the same time, I'm still thinking about all these different things, you know, things I have to do today, things that happened over the past week. Um, and just allow them, just set them, set them at the door for a little while. Um, I've said it to you before. Somebody said it to me once. They said, you can let that baggage sit over there. It'll still be there when we're done. Um, and so you could, you can set it over there. It's going to be all right. Um, and so just let, let all the concerns, all the cares of this morning, we can start the morning without them. Um, we can just go into the presence of God and just let God breathe God's spirit over us this morning. And so invite you just into a moment of silence. Let everything go as we prepare to pray this morning.
Let us pray. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. And turning to our collect for the week of June 7th. In the name of the Father, in name of Son, in name of Spirit, three in one. Father, cherish me. Son, cherish me. Spirit, cherish me. Three, all kindly. God, make me holy. Christ, make me holy. Spirit, make me holy. Three, all holy. Three, aid my hope. Three, aid my love. Three, aid mine eye and my knee from stumbling, my knee from stumbling. Amen. Our antiphon for today. Give ear to our cry, O Lord. Listen to your children praying. Today we pray from Psalm 39. We'll be reading verses 11 through 15. Take your affliction from me. I am worn down by the blows of your hand. With rebukes for sin, you punish us. Like a moth, you eat away all that is dear to us. Truly, everyone is but a puff of wind. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears. For I am but a sojourner with you, a wayfarer as all my forebears were. Turn your gaze from me, that I may be glad again, before I go my way and am no more. Antiphon again. Give ear to our cry, O Lord. Listen to your children praying. Our first reading for this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, and today we'll be reading verses 13 through 19. If you will only heed his every commandment that I am commanding you today, loving the Lord your God and serving him with all your heart and with all your soul. Then he will give the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the later rain. And you will gather in your grain, your wine and your oil. And he will give grass in your fields for your livestock and you will eat your fill. Take care or you will be seduced into turning away, serving other gods and worshiping them. For then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you, and he will shut up the heavens, so that there will be no rain, and the land will yield no fruit. Then you will perish quickly off the good land that the Lord is giving you. You shall put these words of mine in your heart and soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and fix them as an emblem on your forehead. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 5. We'll be reading verses 27 to 42. When they had brought them, they had had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, 
and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at the right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the men to be put outside for a short time. Then he said to them, Fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. For some time ago, Theudas rode up, rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. But he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and disappeared. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up at the time of the census and got people to follow him. He also perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone, because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to, throw, to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. They were convinced by him. And when they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Our antiphon once again. Give ear to our cry, O Lord. Listen to your children praying. And our reflection for the day comes from Benedict of Nursia, the great father of Western monasticism. And in his rule for monastic community, Benedict of Nursia wrote, The first step of humility is to cherish at all times the sense of awe with which we should turn to God. Again, the first step of humility is to cherish at all times the sense of awe with which we should turn to God. And we turn now to our prayer request for the day, and you'll forgive me, um, as I said, I've kind of been in and out, so if there's been some changes to this um, over the last week, I apologize, but I did get a couple of updates today that I wanted wanted to offer, um, both by Belinda, um, and so just wanted to offer them up on her behalf. Um, first of all, um, her daughter Casey Finn um, is just struggling with a lot of family issues and with a, a great deal of stress, and I want to take this opportunity as we raise her up to say that these are the kind of prayer requests that we don't often get. Um, the folks are like, well, I just have to deal with this. When in fact, this is actually what we need to pray for sometimes is that we're all, we're all carrying at times these very heavy loads, um, but we don't feel that we can bring them to the community for prayer. Um, and so um, I certainly know what this feels like. And so for Casey um, and for her family, we certainly lift them up and ask God's blessings upon them that he would relieve the burden of that stress. Um, and then also, and we were asked to pray for Morgan, um, who is their um, niece, um, who is nine years old with some severe cardiac issues. Um, we won't go into details about everything, simply to know that um, a nine-year-old is struggling with her heart. Um, and that obviously is something that we can and should pray for and is our joy to do so. Um, and so we also pray for her parents, John and Jennifer. Um, just anyone who's ever had a child suffer knows uh, the struggles that come with that. And so we pray for them as well this day. And so, friends, let us turn our thoughts to God.
Lord, if the community will permit me, I give you thanks personally for bringing me back into these doors, the doors of this community, to come back and to find welcome, to find uh, hope um, for a good time, um, and to continue to find such enthusiasm and commitment for prayer in these days of pandemic, in these days of racial distress, in these days, Lord, where we are simply looking to you to make sense of where we are. And so, Lord, we say thanks that this community persists, this community continues every single day without fail to simply offer up our own needs, to offer up our prayers, to pray the words of Scripture, and to pray for our brothers and sisters. We thank you that you have created this space. We thank you that you have allowed us to participate in this. And we thank you for each and every person, whenever they're able to jump on, um, who has contributed to offering up prayer in this way. And so, God, we just stop and say thank you for this tremendous gift that maybe we never would have found if it wasn't for these times and it wasn't for these moments. And so we offer up our gratitude. And as Benedict suggests for us, or the first step of our own humility is to simply, to simply cherish the sense of awe that you continue to be involved in our lives and that you continue to speak through your words and through one another and through the church and through circumstances. We do cherish that, Lord. And we say thank you for your many gifts to us today. And Lord, it's out of your goodness and because as we have a sense of your goodness and hope that you continue to be good, that we can then turn our thoughts to the places where we need to, we hope to see your goodness in some, some new way, in some profound way. We ask you to intercede in the lives of those whom we pray for this day. Lord, we lift up especially our sister Casey and her family, Lord, as they're struggling with family issues and with stress, Lord. As these days of pandemic and quarantine and, and uncertainty continue to lengthen, Lord, the amount of stress, the amount of uncertainty, and yes, even family issues continue to rise. And Lord, we pray not only for Casey, but for all who are feeling this stress and ask God that you would help us to find ways to ease that burden. The Lord, alongside the stress and uncertainty that comes with this, we also would find times of love and joy, relaxation and hope. And so we pray for Casey this day. We also pray, O oh God, for our dear sister Morgan, nine years old, who's struggling with heart concerns, a variety of cardiac issues. And Lord, again, this it, perhaps nothing brings the brokenness of the world uh, more to mind than when a child suffers. And so we pray for Morgan, and we pray fervently, O oh God, that you would intervene in her life and that you would strengthen her heart. We pray also for her parents, John and Jennifer, and we ask God that you would strengthen them as well, that they, would be, that they would be extraordinary parents in this time, providing hope and love for Morgan as she goes through, these, goes through the tests and the, and the treatments that she's going to require. We lift her up to you, O oh God, and trust that you love your child and that you will intervene and be with her. We also pray, O oh God, for the many concerns that we have named before you, we lift them up to you again this day. We pray for Caroline Will and Jean Brothers, Billy Heath and Dave Cunningham, Sherry Armstrong, Tom Cross, Brian Cunningham, Scott Davis, Drusilla Short, Dawn Penny, Ann Wilson, Derek Householder, Melinda Sims, and Judy Most, Chelsea Sire, Perry Lyons, Jared Brown, Denise Trench, Elaine Harmon, Ken Booker, Doris Bortner, the family of Carol Dutterer, Carly and Hudson, for the family of Elwood Stambaugh, for Dave Morschbacher, for Riley Black and Jeremy Dutterer. Hear us, O God, as we pray, lifting up the concerns that remain in the quiet of our hearts.
And friends, in the face of need, in the face of such profound suffering that our world experiences now, we often find ourselves at a loss for words. And Jesus says, when you pray, say this. And so in the footsteps of our Savior, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, send us forth into the day to rejoice in all things, to trust you in all circumstances, and to proclaim your coming kingdom to all people. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen indeed, friends. Well, it is a joy to be back with you. Thank you all so much. There's a lot of you on today, so thank you. Um, though I have um, every, <laughs> I have every suspicion. Y'all just wanted to see if I did anything with my hair. Uh, that was on my list. I just didn't. Um, but you need to know that I have absolutely fabulous kayaking and golf cart hair. Wind blowing in it. I mean, I just, I felt, I felt gorgeous. So, <laughs> so eventually one of these days I'll get something done. Um, but friends, whether we are laughing together or crying together. Whether we're, whether we're wide awake and aware of God's presence or sleeping and just dragging ourselves here, however we come to this space, it is a joy to see you in this space. So thank you so much for welcoming me back and look forward to spending this week and this time with you. I'll see you all in the morning. Peace and good, my friends. <laughs>